Hello everyone, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In this video, we will discuss about food processing industry. By the end of the video, you will be able to answer any question asked about food processing industry in your GS3. Let's begin. So what do you mean by food processing industry? Here is the definition. Food processing is a mechanism in which original physical properties undergo a change and the transformed product is edible and has a commercial value. So in this definition, there are two keywords. One is the processed food should be edible and it should have a commercial value. For example, we have a packet of Maggi. You all are very much aware of this. This is an example of processed food. And we also have oil, edible oil, okay, edible oil, edible oil is also a very good example for processed food. So what is the context in which we are discussing this issue today? It is because government has announced 10,900 crore as a central sector scheme for production linked incentive scheme for food processing industry see p l i s f p i which stands for production linked incentive production linked incentive scheme scheme for food processing industry what do you mean by production linked incentive as the term itself suggests the government will provide incentives Government will provide incentives based on the amount of production, based on the amount of production. This scheme was launched in order to boost, in order to boost the employment, in order to boost the employment and supply and supply during or during or post COVID times. Okay, post COVID, India was going through a phase of slowdown and recession when it comes to economics. So in order to boost the employment and bridge the demand and supply, in order to boost the employment and bridge demand and supply, government came up with a scheme called production linked incentive scheme. In this context, we are discussing the issue of food processing industry today. And this is a central sector scheme. You need to remember this. This is a central sector scheme. What do you mean by a central sector scheme? And how is it different from centrally sponsored scheme? You should know the differences between central sector scheme and centrally sponsored scheme. In this, in this context, I want you to comment. I want you to comment the other other central sector schemes that you are aware of okay there are many central sector schemes and i want you to comment those central sector schemes that you are aware of in the comment box and the government aims to create employment of 2.5 lakh in order to create employment of 2.5 lakh by 2025 and 26 government has come up with production linked incentive scheme okay i hope you are clear with this and why do we need food processing industry? What is the importance? Why do we need food processing industry? Okay, it reduces the food wastage. You all know that the wastage of food in India amounts to almost 93,000 crores per year. This is the amount of food that we waste. Okay, and this includes the post harvest, post harvest losses post harvest losses and also losses due to transport and also losses due to transport and logistics and also storage and also storage and you know this storage happens in the godons of food corporation of india and this food corporation of india godons are overburdened are overburdened okay are overburdened so the food processing industry food processing industry solves all these problems it solves the problem of post harvest it solves the problem of transports and storage it also overall 
solves the problem of food wastage and saves almost 93,000 crores per year. Okay. Here I want to remind you that there is an issue of food wastage in India at the same time at the same time there is an issue of malnutrition in India okay. malnutrition in India malnutrition we have parameters for example we have stunting we have wasting underweight we have underweight and infant mortality rate okay these are the factors or these are the components to measure malnutrition so these are this is like a dichotomy okay this is like a dichotomy we have food wastage on the one side and we also have the prevalence of malnutrition on the other side this has to be bridged and this problem has to be solved and in order to solve this problem food processing industry is the only solution i hope you're clear with this and see fight malnutrition we discussed this crop diversification crop diversification means farmers should be encouraged to grow more than one crops at a time or at after each intervals this is very important to solve to solve farmer economic problems economic problems and also environmental problems you all know the indian agriculture is said to be cereal centric okay indian agriculture is said to be cereal centric in order to in order to shift farmers from cereals to other remunerative crops food processing industry is very crucial okay it also generates employment we discussed that government aims to create almost 2.5 lakh employment through production linked incentive schemes and revenue and exports the processed food when exported when exported provides revenue to government okay it also doubles the farmers income food processing industry is required because and it has all these advantages okay and what is the potential why are we talking about food processing industry in india as of now okay and india is ranked second globally in food production okay india is ranked second globally in food production see you need to remember these data okay you need to remember this data in order to quote in your gs3 in order to quote in your gs3 there is a separate topic called food processing industry there is a separate topic called food processing industry so there are high chances there are high chances of upsc asking questions on this topic so india is ranked first in spices production in the world india is ranked second in fish as well as aquaculture india is ranked first again in milk production india is ranked second in the production of fruits and vegetables india is ranked first in the number of livestock population okay because of all this because of all this we are giving more importance to food processing industry because india has these potentials and if these potentials are not reaped if this potential is not reaped then it becomes a disaster it becomes a disaster to almost 48% of india's population who are dependent on agriculture and allied activities okay got it i hope you have understood this and what are the locations let's discuss the location of food processing industry this can be asked as a part of gs1 in gs1 there is a separate topic which says location of industries okay and here in this part this question can be asked what do you mean by food processing industry and discuss the location of food processing industry in india so how, where is it located you can see this is punjab haryana belt where you have bumper crop every year cereal centric bumper crops every year okay and here you have madhya pradesh and all the coastal states and all the coastal states eastern coastal states they are very rich they are very rich in food processing industry because of aquaculture because of aquaculture and fishery the marine marine states the states which share border they are rich and the food processing industry is concentrated in these areas it is also concentrated over here because of the availability of fishes and what is the distribution 
how is it distributed between organized and unorganized sector see here it is, it is a very important please focus organized sector organized sector has 93% of investment in plant machinery okay organized sector has 93% of investment in plant machinery and unorganized sector has just 7% of investment okay see relate 93% investment in organized sector but just 7% in unorganized sector organized sector contributes 90% of the output and has 93% of investment unorganized sector contributes just 10% just 10% because it has just 7% of investment the investment is directly proportional to the output investment is directly proportional to the output but the important part comes here unorganized sector unorganized sector employs almost 75 percent of people who are engaged in food processing see unorganized sector has just seven percent of investment contributes ten percent to the overall output but employs almost 75 percent of people and here here organized sector employs just 25 percent of people this is a very important inference that you have to draw from this discussion what there's also based on this discussion you can form your inference and you can recommend you can recommend government should work towards formalizing the food processing industry and in this 75 percent of employment almost 50 percent are family labor they don't employ any outside labor and the entire work is carried out by the members of family okay then let's discuss the supply chain of food processing sector food processing sector or industry has inputs inputs to farmland inputs to farmland and production and the production procurement and storage the food processing manufacturing industry will procure will procure the agricultural output and stores it and processes it and goes through primary processing which includes cleaning and basic processing and this next stage is secondary processing which is value addition and then comes marketing wholesaling and retailing this is the entire process that is involved in a food processing industry you can write the same diagram you can write the same diagram in your answer and this is a value addition to your answer okay we'll see the same is here farm inputs aggregators and logistics that we already spoke about procurement and storage food processors these are the manufacturers ancillaries like packaging these are sideways and then food retailing in order to have all this going smoothly one thing that india is lacking is statutory basis for contract farming and this was promised this was promised by the government in recent farm bills in recent farm bills there were three farm bills that government wanted to enact government wanted to enact but due to protests and due, due to opposition and these bills were recently taken off this is the supply chain and and you, you practice these kind of diagrams so that you can add value to your answer and what are the upstream and downstream linkages what are the upstream and downstream linkages this is also called as this is also called as backward backward and forward linkages backward and forward linkages okay backward and forward linkages correct so this is a manufacturer that is food processor and he has he has to procure raw materials from farm from farmer and this will be transported and this will be transported by a supplier or a person who handles the logistics and the manufacturing happens here manufacturing happens here and this is distributed this is distributed to wholesale 
okay distributed to wholesale and then this reaches the consumer now you will be able to appreciate you will be able to appreciate the entire process entire process that goes on while preparing the maggi while preparing the maggi or edible oil or edible oil or this is also the process that goes when we buy a packaged milk okay when we buy a packaged milk every day in the morning this is the entire process that goes on behind now we will be able to appreciate this process okay what is the way forward what should india do as of now india has to bridge the supply chain management india has to take care of supply chain management the value additions that we already spoke of backward and forward linkages this has to be integrated the second one we need to have better technology when we have better technology we will be able to process the agricultural products in a better way and with a less time agricultural products are perishable they are perishable and because of that we need to have better technology so that we can process it in a better way formalization of food processing industry we discussed about this issue before in the in the, in the video there are just 7% of investment in unorganized sector which accommodates 75% of population so this has to be changed and india has to move towards formalizing the food processing industry and food processors needs to have institutional credit i already told you almost 60% of the unorganized food processors employ family labor they do not have hire the labor from outside they employ family labor because of that they will not have access to institutional credit so this is a way forward in order to boost the food processing industry in india apmc reforms and contract farming due to three farm bills farm bills were taken off as of now so we need we need to bridge the gap through apmc reforms and contract farming so let's discuss a question <coughs> the question goes explain the backward and forward linkages across the supply chain in food processing sector also discuss their importance in ensuring the success of supply chain management in food processing sector in india okay we have this as i already tell to as i always tell you you need to divide you need to divide the question into two parts in this question the backward and forward linkages forms the first part discuss the importance of ensuring the success of supply chain management in food processing industry in india becomes the second part so you need to address both the parts of the question in a equal way so that so that you will be awarded the highest marks we have discussed two diagrams one diagram is of supply chain management and the one is of upward and downward linkages downward linkages practice these kind of diagrams and keep watching keep watching legacy ias academy for more enriching content thank you